Hello everyone. Last week we had a quick overview of the new little CNC, so today let's make something useful. So while we wait for our nameplate to dry, uh, it's actually going to fit right in here, assuming all my calibration factors are correct. Uh, we'll go over a brief overview of the machine. Not brief, the last one was brief. I guess this one will be more brief, medium brief. I don't know. Anyways, as you can see, I got all the covers on. Uh, these are all just uh, Lexan covers, about mm, 100,000 of an inch thick. Uh, the front one, it has little set screws, steel set screws that are embedded in the back. And then the front acrylic cover just clicks into place with magnets and then front will finger hole to flick it back out when you need to remove it. Uh, the bed is just MDF because I found that to be fairly easy. What I normally do to secure material as you saw when I was milling the PCB is I put a piece of uh, masking tape down, uh, squish it down really good, usually I use a steel spatula, a little bit of uh, crazy glue, uh, cyanoacrylate, another piece on the work I'm working with and then a little bit of accelerator on the piece that I'm going to mount and stick that on there. I found that works far better than double-sided tape. Double-sided tape when it warms up it tends to release um, using the two masking tape with the glue in the middle. Uh, it doesn't release from heat. I've machined aluminum for like hours on it and uh, I mean as long as it doesn't get too hot it, uh, it, it stays really solid and it doesn't kind of goo around like uh, double-sided tape does. In my experience anyways uh, spindle, as you can see, is still underpowered. The power supply I'm running is currently two old laptop supplies ganged together in a very not proper fashion. Uh, it's only outputting maybe uh, 80 watts or something like that. The spindle needs about 300, 400 watts. So uh, if I get too much voltage seg or if I load the spindle up too much, the ESC rearms and the spindle stops. So you might have heard it or seen it in the videos rearming through the cycle so the RPM bobs up and down. Not so good. So uh, we need a new supply for that guy. All the motors, all the stepper motors that drive this thing are NEMA 23 size stepper motors. Uh, they're fairly low power units, I think they're about 2 amp units. I mean hugely overkill for a machine of this size, um, but they were from my old CNC that I had. Uh, they're driving 8mm 4 start lead screw. Uh, most printers have that nowadays, easy, cheap to get on eBay. The uh, little cutouts here, as you can see, are stolen or taken or 
borrowed from the other mill design. Uh, it just allows one of the rails to move so you don't over constrain the axes. Like I said, these are all riding on acetyl or uh, Delrin uh, bushings. So even though all these holes were CNC drilled and then put together, there might be some differences in during assembly and that would cause the axes to bind. So if you put something like this in there, this lets the top rail float just a little bit and it keeps everything from binding. It doesn't float enough to really influence the cut quality because by the time I put enough force on the cutting tool, I'm gonna bog my spindle anyways. So works for the style of system. Here you can see my brushless motor setup. It's not ideal, this is actually an in-runner motor, it's an old RC helicopter motor that I had just laying around. An outrunner with a lower KV rating would be a better motor choice, but use what you have, right? Um, like I said, the pulleys I turned myself on the little tag, and then the belt is just an O-ring. I thought that O-ring would be my limiting factor for power, but it turns out that uh, that's not the case at all. <laughs> uh, it actually grips really well. The limiting speed factor is the fact that the O-ring starts to expand if I go too fast. Um, but I, I only need to be spinning at probably 20 or 30,000 RPM uh, for most of the work I can do here. And like I said, my power supply is the limiting factor right now. I just can't put enough amps. I need to put about 30 amps into that motor to really get it to sing. And I'm putting in like eight amps right now. So uh, not enough. I got a supply coming, but uh, for now, it seems to be working okay. The bearings that are in the big HDPE spindle head there are just 608 skate bearings. Yes, they're not meant to take an axial load, but they seem to be working just fine. Um, if I toast them, I'll put better double raced bearings in there. But for now, like I said, I had them on hand and they seem to be working just fine. All right, here you can see we have the nameplate finished. A uh, few problems. Uh, one problem is the vectors, the C, the two, some of the other curves are a little messed up in the type, the type face I was using. So I'll have to correct for those. Um, but I wanted kind of one of the first things I mill on this machine to go on the machine just so I can judge, you know, how I tweak it over time. Uh, some of the other letters came out great, so I know part of that is a vector problem. Uh, on the K and on the R, there's also a little bit of overcutting as the axes come back. I have a little bit of digital backlash compensation running in cam, and I think I might have overmeasured it. I was measuring it at a few thousandths. Um, I don't think it exists as bad as I think it does because it looks like it's overcompensating on some parts. And anyways, I'm gonna have to tweak with that and uh, dial that down. If not, I might have to redesign my little uh, anti-backlash nuts, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it so far. The real question now is, uh, does it fit? Yeah, right, moment of truth. Let's line that up, that one up. Ho, 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 ho. Look at that. Beautiful. That's it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I got some other projects coming up on this machine. Um, but now I can actually say with the covers in place and the nameplate on, it is finished. Maybe next time we'll try milling some aluminum. Thanks for watching. See you next time.